So welcome to the principal's message. For the next two weeks, we're going to be focusing on learning at the college and particularly on the concept of personalised learning. The challenge for us in schools is that we need to be designing a curriculum and learning experiences for children that are focused on the future, not focused on how we experienced school. And so today I'm joined by three of our learning leaders at the school. Paul Fielding, learning leader maths, Chris Schiller, learning leader primary and Maria Boucher, learning leader English. We're going to have a little bit of a conversation about what is personalised learning at the college. Maria, in terms of providing a definition of personalised learning, how would you define it? Um, I suppose we t have been taking as our central focus uh, in looking at personalised learning the idea that we want to um, promote opportunities for each and every student in the college to achieve his or her best. So really when we're talking about personalised learning, we're talking about uh, providing opportunities to tailor education to suit each individual's needs. Um, and I guess we're looking at doing that in three main ways. Uh, by tailoring um, opportunities for students to work at their own pace, by offering some choice in what and how students learn, and by developing flexibility in the modes of instruction. Um, so that's, I guess, the, the guiding principle yeah, of, of yeah. it all. And Paul, what does that look like in maths for you? The the idea of pace, like personalising the pace, that, that can be done so well with technology. And technology is advanced to a level where that can be done, so following the student's pace like to a T. So students don't always um, you know, sort of feel the same way each day. They could be having good days, bad days. And we can use technology to adapt to how each individual student is operating. And particularly in Year 7, you've been um, utilising that with Year 7 maths, haven't you? Can you tell us a little bit about how that's worked in Year 7, what that looks like? and um, It's been going really well so far. We've uh, implemented a program called MathSpace and this is a tailored maths program so students can uh, follow, follow the curriculum but each question is tailored to exactly how they're operating at, at a maths level. So how does that work for a Year 7 cohort of students in your maths class? Well, given the use of the technology, students can't be left behind because the teacher has got um, direct updates on how every student is progressing. So you'd have children in your Year 7 maths class at a whole range of different places? Yes, I've got um, students operating up to Year 8. They've got access to Year 9 work if they would like. Um, they can choose different parts of the curriculum as, as they're wanting to. Hmm. Maria, in in Year 9, in Semester 2 this year, you're, you're looking at doing things a little bit different in Year 9 English. What, what's, what's that look like for English students in Year 9? Um, so we've, we've been developing a, a pilot project um, at Year 9 where actually starting in Year 8 we had a group of students working with us um, to look at what texts they'd actually like to study um, rather than the teachers always dictating what text will be studied. So we've ended up um, offering a, a range of text selection choices to the students. They've, they've had four different genres to choose from um, and they've now chosen what they would like to study. So the old, the old days of Year 9 having a set text and everyone reading the same text, that'll be different next term. Right, um, but within that we thought that it was really, really important uh, that we make sure that the students still have the same opportunity to learn the same skills. So what, what we're not wanting is a situation where we just say, um, off you go and, and learn whatever the teacher happens to feel like teaching you. We want to make sure that the students will be able to explore the different texts but still come out of it with the same skills that they all need for Year 10. But at the same time, we're also conscious that students, as Paul <coughs> says, have different needs at different times. So there'll be <coughs> flexible groupings and flexible opportunities within the classes um, to access instruction about their skill development. Yeah, this, this is applicable to, to all learners, whether they be in prep or whether they be in year 12. In primary, Chris, how does that play out in the primary school, that personalised learning concept? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, with the math space, the, we have a couple of year sixes actually working with the year seven group and actually join Paul in their classes and they follow along with the math space system. And so it's fantastic because they can work at their own pace but then also work with the year seven group we also have the rest of the year fives and sixes working on math space as well, along with our other maths curriculum, and they're able to work at their own pace as well and be able to 
accelerate themselves if they need to. And so it's been working yeah. really, really yep. successfully. And I think that's really important to, to know that just because you're in year six doesn't mean that you just have access to year six curriculum. No, absolutely not. We, they have access to the year seven curriculum and even year eight curriculum if need be. So outside outside maths, what else? How does what else does it look like in primary? Yeah, well, um, in English and maths throughout the primary school, um, we have students um, moving to different year levels depending on their abilities. So we'll do um, <coughs> testing beforehand to make sure the child is able to work at that next grade level or a couple years ahead, and then we will move that student on into. Um, further classes. So for example we have Year 2 students working with Year 4 students in maths. We also have a prep student who joins Year 2 maths. So we, it doesn't matter what age they are, it's all about their ability and how they're able to um, work within the academic area, whether it be maths or English. I think that's one of the really exciting things about the personalised learning as a concept though too is that um, we can respond flexibly to students' needs. So what, what personalised learning does is provide opportunities to move in and out of different groupings mm. flexibly yeah. according to yeah. need, rather than saying, this child must accelerate across the board. Absolutely. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it's also, it's, it's important to be very clear that it's not just about kids that are really capable. No. Yeah. It's also about students that um, may have some specific needs in a particular area of a curriculum. So. Personalised learning allows us to cater for um, a diverse skill set in our students too. Paul, feedback from the Year 7s? They're, they're enjoying it, yeah. They, they like the freedom to do what they want, when they want. Yeah. Being able to access that full curriculum. And, and do you have a sense that those students that might struggle with maths are, are able to catch up or progress to a point where they're back, back where maybe they might want to be? Yes, in fact, that's some of the areas we get the greatest response is from the, um, the students that have tended to struggle with maths through primary school. They've sort of come in and they feel like they've been given a bit more freedom to maybe go over some basics and then, then move on. So in your Year 7 maths class, I think it's important to also say that children are not working individually for all of their maths class, are they? There is still direct instruction by the teacher at the board or the the projector screen, isn't there? Oh yes, there's a lot of other skills they can't just learn <laughs> everything from staring at their iPad. <laughs> so we do, um, yeah, we do some direct instruction, we do group work and we also do uh, a lot of hands-on activities. And I, I think that's probably a, another important part of our definition in fact is um, that personalised learning really only works when students and teachers are in a collaborative partnership. And they, they're the skills that we ne need to help our children have, aren't they? Mm. Independent learning skills, ability to own and construct knowledge themselves as well. Yeah. Making the development of those <coughs> kinds of skills as well as literacy and numeracy and mm -hmm. etc mm. um, is so critical for a 21st <coughs> century learner. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. If you'd like to learn more about personalised learning, these are three people of course that you could um, contact at the school by email or maybe at parent-teacher interviews. Next week we're going to focus on our discovery program in the high school in years 7, 8 and 9 which is a really good example of personalised learning for our middle school students, where it really is around constructing their own learning, constructing knowledge for themselves and things like that. So I hope you've enjoyed um, learning a little bit more about personalised learning and maybe look forward to next week. Thanks very much.